Um, this was one of the topics that we added to the presentation list based on some of the discussions we had had over the last year. So the objectives for today, um, we're going to look at some of the causes of elevated prolactin levels, um, specifically the drug-related causes. Um, I do have some of the medical ones in there, but we're going to focus on the impact that meds may have. Um, we're gonna identify some of the symptoms, so why might that be a problem? How might those patients present? And then we're gonna compare the impact of some of the, um, especially mental health medications um, on prolactin levels. Nicotine is supposed to say prolactin. Um, so prolactin is a hormone that's secreted from the anterior pituitary. Um, so it's secreted by the lactotroph cells, um, and oftentimes, I, th I think one of the most prominent roles of prolactin that people think of is with lactation, um, so in patients who are pregnant, but it plays a number of other roles as well. Um, it can play a role in angiogenesis, um, so it actually can help with the release of a number of different pro-angiogenic factors. Um, and influence some of the endothelial cell migration, um, which may potentially play a role not only in breast development that we can see with hyperprolactinemia, um, but also some of the potential consequences. So having elevated prolactin in patients who may have um, tumors might be problematic as it would allow really the proliferation of some of those blood vessels. Another role that it has, um, which is really fascinating. So there was a potential to go all the way down this um, rabbit hole a little bit, um, is that prolactin actually plays a role as a cytokine. Um, so it has a number of different actions on both B cells, T cells, and a number of other mediators within the immune system itself. Um, it's been found to increase the release of interferon alpha and gamma. Um, it also has been involved in the proliferation of a number of different T cells, and it seems to reset the threshold for activation of B cells. Um, so by lowering that threshold, B cells are able to be activated a little bit easier, um, and oftentimes that's associated with auto-reactive, um, so autoimmune responses. So in some patients that do have autoimmune diseases, they may have some elevated prolactin although there's an interesting relationship with stress and prolactin levels, so it's unclear which one came first, um, but it can play a role in increasing the reactivity of all of those as well. Um, the last item on here is osmoregulation. Um, so in a number of different vertebrates, they've looked at the impact of prolactin on electrolyte levels. Um, specifically for humans, it's mainly reducing the um, excretion of sodium. Um, so we may actually get a little bit more sodium retention. Doesn't seem to be one of the most prominent roles, but just for matters of completion, I did include that. In looking at normal values for prolactin, um, in general, there may be a little bit of fluctuation, um, but for most of the, the evidence, the trials that we're gonna look at a little bit, um, it tended to be men with um, values that were above 20 or 25 and higher, um, and non-pregnant females, those that had values that were above 25 to 30 or higher. So what can cause those elevations in prolactin? So I split this into two slides. Um, this is more of the conditions that could cause elevated prolactin, so lactation, pregnancy, um, if someone has a prolactinoma, those tend to be the most common. Um, and interestingly, those prolactinomas are 40% of the pituitary adenomas that are present. Other conditions, though, that can cause elevations in prolactin, hypothyroidism, um, so if a patient has elevated um, thyrotropin releasing hormone, or TRH, that actually stimulates the release of prolactin. Um, so in some patients that have uncontrolled hypothyroidism, they may also develop hyperprolactinemia. Patients who have renal failure also can have elevated prolactin levels. This seems to be um, due to an impaired ability of the renals to um, degrade the prolactin itself, so there's more prolactin that's hanging around. Um, interestingly, it, 
it doesn't look like dialysis is able to um, clear all of that. There can be some residual hyperprolactinemia, although transplants do look to be able to um, reduce the levels of prolactin. The final um, cause that's on this slide is stress. Um, so stress, exercise, both have been associated with elevations in prolactin. Um, it, now these are consistent elevations in prolactin. There's a couple other things that can cause brief transient elevations in prolactin, but this may be of concern for a number of patients that have chronic um, persistent mental illness. This slide I thought needed one all to itself because there's quite a few medications that are um, associated with elevations in prolactin. The most prominent um, mechanism for elevating prolactin are agents that block dopamine. Um, so in the tubero infundibular pathway, by blocking dopamine D2 receptors um, in the anterior pituitary, it actually stops the inhibition of prolactin release. Um, so by using things like antipsychotics, um, chlorpro um, chlor propamide, you'll end up with blocking those D2 receptors and having uncontrolled release of the prolactin. But there are a number of other um, classes of medications that also have been associated with elevated prolactin. Um, so anesthetics, anticonvulsants, antidepressants, especially those that are serotonin focused, so SSRIs, SNRIs, TCAs, MAOIs, um, serotonin is one of the neurotransmitters that also results in release of, um, stimulates the release of prolactin. So by enhancing the amount of serotonin, you actually could um, strengthen that signal to release more prolactin. Histamine is also associated with stimulating the release of um, prolactin. So by blocking some of the histamine receptors, you stop that inhibition. Um, so both regular antihistamines as well as H2 blockers, so things that we might use for um, gastrointestinal um, disorders like GERD, could also elevate some of the prolactin levels. There's a handful of antihypertensives. Verapamil was the most um, commonly reported, and it does have some dopaminergic antagonism, and that may be why um, that does elevate the prolactin levels. Estrogens. Um, I didn't expect there to be controversy over that, um, but there are a couple different mechanisms that they think um, patients who are taking either hormone replacement therapy or oral contraceptives could elevate the prolactin levels, one of them being a proliferation of the lactotroph cells in the anterior pituitary. And then for the opiates, it does appear <clears throat> that um, the opiate receptors, the mu opiate receptors, also can be a signaling pathway for prolactin. Um, so administration of those has been associated with elevations. So recognizing that we have quite a few meds, um, it would be important to do a med profile review, especially in a patient that may have hyperprolactinemia, um, because it may be something that's iatrogenic. So what would be the consequences of having elevated prolactin in some of these patients? Um, there are a number. Uh, so having elevated prolactin can reduce the um, release of either estrogen or testosterone. So we see a lot of reproductive related effects. Um, in female patients, they may have infrequent um, menstrual periods. They may cease having menstrual periods completely. Um, they may have decreased libido. In male patients, they can have erectile dysfunction. Both patients can have breast development. Um, it can result in galacteria. Um, for female patients, they may actually leak, which could be distressing for some of those. And um, breast development could be really problematic for some of the patients, especially some of the young um, men who may be starting on antipsychotic medications. It could result in infertility. And by having some of those impacts on the other tissues throughout the body, there is a concern for having an increased cancer risk, both breast cancer and prostate cancer. Um, by reducing the amount of estrogen in the body, there has been a documented reduction in bone mineral density for patients that have hyperprolactinemia. Um, in one study, they actually found a 25% reduction in spinal bone density um, in females that had hyperprolactinemia. 
and it's not reversed immediately upon um, reduction of the prolactin level. So it does seem to have a little bit more of a sustained effect. And finally, by reducing the amount of estrogen, it may prevent um, some of the younger females from having the benefit, the cardiovascular benefit of the estrogen um, because those levels are reduced. So there is concern that there's an increased risk for cardiovascular disease in that population. So both kind of a um, reproductive implications, quality of life implications, as well as potential other disease state problems. So do they, uh, what kind of impact do we see? We see a pretty significant impact with most of the antipsychotics. Um, so this is, I was trying to be concise. So this is one chart um, that looks at the impact of antipsychotic medications on prolactin. It was taken from a review that was published in 2014. As you can see, we have um, a handful of medications that do have a pretty prominent impact on prolactin levels, amisulpiride, um, peliperidone, and risperidone having the most. Um, then we see another pocket of antipsychotics that still have quite an effect, loracidone, um, olanzapine, and ziprazidone. Interestingly, um, there was a, an analysis done with the KD data that said that the D2 receptor occupancy, if it's a 73% receptor occupancy, that seemed to be the threshold um, for pushing patients over to developing hyperprolactinemia. But even in some of the antipsychotic medications that don't have pronounced D2 antagonism, things like clozapine, um, we still do see some elevations um, in prolactin. So relatively uncommon, but can still happen. Um, so as you can see with the clozapine, for example, they did a database review of over 400 patients and 11% of them did have elevated prolactin. I put an asterisk next to the aripiprazole. Um, the reason that I did that in the review article itself, it said there was no impact of aripiprazole on um, prolactin levels. That's not entirely true. Um, so there's about a 10 to 15% reported prevalence of elevated prolactin. Um, in one of their 26 week trials, they did have a, a prevalence of 10% of those treated patients had elevated prolactin. With that in mind, that's one of the agents that often is um, added to reduce prolactin for some of these other uh, medications like paliperidone or risperidone. Um, so it still can do it on its own. It does it much less than some of the other medications, um, but I think that's important to keep in mind that it's not necessarily just completely neutral related to prolactin. Um, rarely it can cause the elevations on its own. This was a review that was done in just under a thousand patients. It was done in the Middle East, um, but it took a look even broader beyond the antipsychotic medications. So it was a cross-sectional observation um, study, and they looked at um, 994 patients that were being admitted to different um, inpatient units, and they drew, um, they drew prolactin levels um, on these patients. What they found is that about 40% of them did have elevated prolactin levels. And as you look at the medications, there was a significant range, both um, mood stabilizers, so lithium and valproic acid, lamotrigine, were actually at the top, or top end. Um, so this is the percent of patients um, that had hyperprolactinemia that were on these different medications. Um, so lithium's at the top was 74%. Our antipsychotic medications are very much in the middle, um, with a little right around half or a little more than half experiencing um, hyperprolactinemia. But there's quite a few antidepressants that are on board as well. Um, so a lot of the SSRIs as well as some tricyclic antidepressants had more than a quarter of the patients that were taking those um, end up with hyperprolactinemia. The one medication class that I hadn't spoke about yet that does show up on this list are the benzodiazepines. So clonazepam was actually the second most prevalent medication um, with about 73% that had hyperprolactinemia. I had a little bit of trouble trying to find um, 
proposed theories for why a benzodiazepine would result in hyperprolactinemia. Um, GABA does play a role in the release of, of prolactin, but it's not incredibly clear um, what impact all of the benzos have on prolactin. There are definitely case reports, um, alprazolam, lorazepam, resulting in hyperprolactinemia after other medications have been ruled out. Um, but one of the other theories is that stress piece that we talked about. Potentially these patients are under a significant amount of stress and that also is um, driving up those prolactin levels. So just something interesting to look at. It's, it's way beyond just our antipsychotic medications. And um, interestingly, there's um, a body of research that's being um, developed that's, that's looking at that stress piece. Um, so there are a couple different trials that look specifically at first episode psychosis patients. Um, this was just the most recent one that was published. That's why I selected it. Um, so these were 54 patients um, that were on the inpatient unit. Of those 54, 18 of them were, um, they were all female. 18 of them were first episode patients. So they had not been on antipsychotic medication in the past. Um, they all had a diagnosis of psychotic disorder. And what they found was um, about 75% of those patients that were inpatient had elevated prolactin levels. Of them, almost 78% of those first episode patients had elevated prolactin levels. 74% um, of those that were re-hospitalized, so patients with an existing diagnosis of a psychotic disorder who had previously been treated with antipsychotic medications had elevated prolactin. Um, so one of the things that this did call out is the fact that it may not only be from the medications. Um, so that is something that we may want to keep in mind. And interestingly, they found a correlation between the symptoms that a patient had, um, so delusion, some preoccupation, um, perseveration, um, was associated with some of the higher prolactin levels in, in this cohort, recognizing it's very small. So this may be even beyond just the medications themselves, but something to keep in mind because it is relatively more prevalent in our patient population than in the general population. This was not the focus um, treatment options, but I felt that I, I really wanted to make sure that I included this. So if we have patients that have elevated prolactin levels, trying to minimize um, the use of multiple medications that could elevate prolactin, um, if we can reduce the dose or get rid of some of the duplication in therapy, that would be ideal. Looking for agents that may be a little less potent with the D2 receptor, There have been reports of the addition of amantadine, cabergoline, or um, bromocryptine as dopamine agonists being added on board to kind of help get those prolactin levels underneath under control. Recognizing this is going to be a delicate balance. If you do have a dopamine responsive psychosis, we don't want to make that worse. So in summary, elevated prolactin levels, we see both short and long-term effects, um, both on quality of life, reproductive effects, as well as some potential medical conditions. And we have quite a few of the psychiatric medications that have been associated with prolactin levels. So while antipsychotics are definitely toward the top of the list, they're not the only ones.